Hi, I'm Lauren from IT Support, and today I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step -step how to make a ticket using our self-service portal. So let's get started. If you're not sure where to go to get help, a great place to start is IT's website, which is it.tcu.edu. You'll find options for phone support, chat support, and for creating a ticket yourself, which is what we're going to be doing today. To get to the self-service portal, you can click on our self-help buttons, which can be found in three different places on our website. There's a self-help option right here, right here, and another one over here. Any of them will take you to where you need to go. I'm gonna click on this one. So this brings us to our TCU IT self-service page. You can find some information about creating your own ticket online using ShareWell and logging into the portal. You can click this button right here, or you can click this link here. I'm gonna go ahead and click the button to go into our self-service portal. If you haven't already logged in, you may be prompted to enter your TC credentials before this page loads. So this is the landing page for our self-service portal. And we're gonna talk about a lot of these different sections. And we're also going to go through how to create a ticket step-by-step. -step. So let's talk about navigating this page before we create our ticket. Down here, you'll see a box for My Open Issues. So if you have any tickets that are currently open, you'll see them here. You'll also be able to go in, make changes, and add information. Um, once we create our new ticket, we'll see it in this box too. If you don't have any open issues, you might not see anything here. If you wanna look at past tickets, you can access them by clicking Show All Tickets. We'll take a look at that a little later. In this box over here, you have some technology alerts. So this will just be informational blurbs that might be important to everyone. Over here, we have our top knowledge articles. And right above that, you'll see a link to the knowledge base. Knowledge base articles are articles that we've created that have step-by-step -step instructions or guides for things that are frequently asked about and common issues that we see. So you might be able to find the answer to the problem you're having simply by searching it before you even create a ticket. We'll show you how to do that in a little bit as well. You can also find options to chat with us and another way to see your previous incidents. So let's take a look at creating a new ticket. So these are some of the different options that you will see for creating a new ticket. Um, account management, classroom instructional support, computer management, and so on and so forth. If you don't see exactly what you're looking for here, that's okay. Just pick the thing that most closely relates to the issue you're having. So for me, for the purpose of our test ticket, I'm gonna say that I need help resetting my Okta MFA. So I think that that is probably going to be under account management. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one. So this is a screen we get to when we select an issue. Over on the right, under create a ticket, we'll see some of the common categories for account management since that's what I've clicked on. And I do see the reset Okta MFA option here. So that is what I'm looking for. If you don't see what you're looking for, you do have this option for not listed above, and that'll let you type in your specific issue. Over here, you'll see a box that says helpful solutions. So these are gonna be some of those knowledge base articles that relate to this specific issue. And it looks like this first one here is for our Okta MFA to reset or change our settings. So I'm gonna pretend that I didn't see that, but we'll come back to it so we can see what information we could find ourselves. But for now, let's look at creating a new ticket. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this reset Okta MFA option here. And this is a screen it brings me to. So this is the information that I need to fill out that'll get sent to IT support for someone to review and help me. So for building room or number, I'm gonna go ahead and type in my office and building. They do also have an option for NA. So if you have an issue that doesn't require someone to come see you in person, or perhaps you're working from home, you can type in NA and not type in a location. Under that, you have the options for your uh, preferred contact method. So if you prefer to be contacted by email, you can choose email. If you prefer someone to call you on your office phone or cell phone, just select the option that you prefer here. I'm gonna go ahead and click email and it does automatically fill in my TCU email address right next to it, which is perfect. 
Under the categorization, this is auto filled for me based on those options that I chose um, the account management section and then the Okta MFA request reset. If any of this doesn't look correct, though, there are drop down arrows. So you can see if one of these options is actually better suited to what you were looking for, and you can change that right here. Underneath that, you have a box to describe your problem or request in detail. So this is going to be read by an actual person. So you wanna be sure to provide as much detail as possible. Another thing that'll really help speed up this process is in this box here, be sure to type in your availability to receive help over the next three days, at least three different times that you would be available. That way they already know and can reach out to you with a time that they'd be available to help you out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and describe my issue. Um, so again, I selected the Okta MFA reset. So for this, I'm going to say, I got a new cell phone number and need help resetting Okta MFA. So if you haven't used Okta MFA yet, you probably have, but it is for a lot of our different uh, programs, websites that we use here, you might have to enter uh, a PIN that you get texted on your cell phone or respond to a push notification. So if you were to get a new cell phone number, maybe you didn't change that ahead of time and now you need help resetting Okta. So that is what we're going to say the scenario is for our ticket. Um, so we got a new cell phone number and need help resetting Okta MFA. I'm going to type in those three different times that I am available. Um, so I'm going to say I am available this Thursday anytime after 12 and we're going to say anytime Friday and anytime Monday uh, before 12. So that way they have all that information, some different times that they could make an appointment to help me. It'll just speed things up. It's going to ask me down here to help identify the urgency. So do you know if this is affecting multiple people? So in this case, no, it's not a campus wide issue. It's just the fact that I have a new cell phone number. Um, and does this prevent you from doing your primary job? So in this case, no, it does not. All right, the next thing we want to look at is on the right side here, we have a specifics form. So the specifics form is specific to the issue that you've selected. So not all issues and not all tickets are going to have a specifics form. But this one, especially because it's related to security, it does require some additional information from me. So providing this now in my ticket is again going to help speed things up so that they already have this information and can get started working on my issue as opposed to having to email me to get more information from me. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this out briefly. Um, below that, it does say other items to use if the user cannot answer a total of three of the items above. So if I didn't know three of those, I could add this additional information here. But I do know them, so I'm not going to fill that part out. But generally, the more information you can provide, the better. So I'm going to review all of this information to make sure it's correct before I submit it. One other thing I do want to point out is the fact that you can add an attachment. Uh, I don't need one in this particular instance, but I want to show you how to add one. This can be especially helpful if you were having an issue that, say, um, brought up an error message or a warning message. You could attach a picture of that so that IT support is able to see exactly what you're experiencing. So you can either add it from up here by clicking Attach File, or you can press the Add Attachment button down here. And that will allow you to select your files and add them. You can add more than one attachment. Again, I don't need one for this particular issue, so I'm going to close out, but I want to make sure you know that that is an option that you have. All right, so if this looks complete to me, which it does, I am going to go ahead and click submit. All right, so this lets me know that my issue has been submitted and I'm going to say okay. And now it brings me back to my issue and I'm going to click the home button. So now I'm back onto our initial landing page. And one of the things I wanna be sure I show you how to use is our knowledge base. So again, these are the articles that have been published to help you with common issues. So we have our top knowledge articles here and a quick search bar here. 
We also have a link to our articles, the whole knowledge base um, here. You can choose if you're a student or an employee and you can find different issues under some of those common categories or you can search for an issue. So I'm going to look for Okta MFA because that is what I was needing help with. And it looks like it is actually the second article right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And this would have been what would help me for the ticket that I submitted. So it is on how to reset or change your factor settings on Okta MFA. Um, and so it gives me some instructions here, an additional website to visit, and how I can actually complete this process. So I have the option to either email this to myself or I can print the document to refer back to. So if I look at this and I go, oh, you know what? That is everything that I needed. I can fix this myself. I actually don't even need them to complete that ticket. Then what I can do is I can go back to my homepage and we'll go back to this My Open Issues box that we talked about briefly earlier. So now that I've submitted a ticket for my Okta MFA reset, I do see it in My Open Issues. So if I wanna provide any information um, now, in, in all cases, it wouldn't be that you found the answer yourself. Maybe you have uh, an additional pop-up or something that's happening. You can add information here. But for me, I'm going to say, you know, I found the issue and I don't need help anymore. So I'm going to click on my ticket. And this brings me back up to what we just submitted. And there is this button that says add info. So I'm going to click add info. And in this case, the information I'm adding is that I found the solution. Found the solution in a uh, knowledge base article and I no longer need help. And again, someone from the IT support team will review this and read this and close out the ticket. So I'm gonna click OK. Perfect, so now that's saved and I'm gonna go back home. Now I will still see it under my open issues until someone resolves it for me, but that's okay. So your open issues are going to show up here. But if you wanna see issues that you've had in the past, uh, maybe you wanna review the resolution, maybe you're having the same issue again and you wanna see how it was solved last time, you can go into show all tickets and this will show all of the different tickets that you've had before. It shows that new one that I was just looking at, it shows a resolved one, pending ones, Anything you've had before, you can show them here. So I'm going to click on one of my closed tickets from the past. So for this one, it was another test that I created and I said my issue was um, that I was needing help setting up my Outlook email on a new phone. Um, you will notice that you can't add any information to closed tickets because they are closed, they're resolved, but you can review your resolution details. So anything that had been added for the resolution, how it was solved, you can see that here. Um, those journal notes, if you had no added notes, if one of the technicians had added notes, you could see that, you can see your meal history, um, anything that was done to that ticket, you'll be able to see it. And that specifics form. Um, in this case, for this specific ticket, I didn't have to fill out any of that specific information like we did for the Okta MFA reset, but it does give me additional details and troubleshooting tips. So you can always go back and see your old tickets. All right, um, you can also see your old tickets and all of your tickets by viewing My Incidents. So either that My Incidents button or the Show All Tickets, you can get to them all that way. Again, Open Issues is only for ones that are currently open. And then your Technology Alerts box, just common information that everyone might need to know. So that is how you can use our self-service portal and create a ticket. Um, you can also, again, chat with us for support, or you can call the help desk, and the numbers are listed down below here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful.